Do you feel like you can truly trust yourself? What about the decisions that you make? Do you trust that your decisions and the result of them will ultimately turn out for your highest good? Stay tuned now for an all new episode of One. Welcome, everyone. You are watching One presented by The Breakthrough Show. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas. And for this episode, I'd like to introduce you to our fabulous guest today. Him and his wife were actually guests on The Breakthrough Show, The Breakthroughs Around the World series coming to us from China. He's recognized as a soul whisperer and life transformational specialist who helps people breakthrough, we know about that word here, their BS barriers and build beneficial belief systems in their place. Let's welcome Stuart Elliott to the show. Stuart, welcome. I'm so glad to have you back on the network today. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here to see you again. It's just, uh, you know, a lovely time to have a conversation. So I enjoy it. And uh, I'm sure you be, do too. I do. I really do. I get. I feel so selfish sometimes. I get so much out of these conversations, and I'm like, I don't care if anybody else does. This was really good for me. So, <laughs> well, that's it's, it's, that's good. I, I think that energy that you pick up, you share with people anyway, so they enjoy it as well. I appreciate that. I really do, and I always love your backgrounds. What do we see behind you today, Stuart? This is uh, an ancient village we went to last week. This just had the May holidays over here, and. Uh, <sighs> We went here and we just stood there and it's about three, 400 years old or something like that. And we just stood there and it was so peaceful, so beautiful. You could just stand there in tranquility for ever almost. And it, it uh, looks you know, like I, it. I'm, okay. gonna I'm gonna try for it not to be a distraction while you're talking, <laughs> just drift away. Yeah, well, I, I can just look at it and, and, and just feel calm anytime I want to. So I'm selfish in that way as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, I'm really excited. Obviously, like I said, you've been on the network before. We've talked to you and your amazing wife. and um, mm -hmm. But I'm excited to get into your story today. So I'd love for you, Stuart, to share with us your one story. Okay, so it, my story is about trust. And trust is an interesting thing, you know. What does it really mean when you say trust yourself or trust your decisions or trust this or that? And I think a lot of people, and you know, I've, I've been there as well, obviously, but we, we second guess. We, do, we don't recognize that our first guess is the closest. And for, you know, as, as an example, when I was living in South Africa, I was uh, in an archery competition, and this is what we call an unmarked round. So there's no distances marked uh, uh, from the you know the peg in the ground to the target, and it's in the, the forest or the bush felt or wherever. And you get to the peg, and you have to judge the distance. And what happens for most people is they look at it, they say, "Okay, it's 30 yards, it's 50 yards, whatever the first figure comes to mind is." And then they look at it, and say, "No, no, it's not 30. It's actually 40 yards." No, maybe it's 25. And they start second guessing. And they end up with a figure which is so far away from the first one. And it's never, never anywhere close to the target. If they go with that first one, they will always hit the target. And another example of trusting that type of uh, understanding, that feeling, is another archery competition I was on. I came to um, a, a target which I couldn't see. It was in the deep shade of the trees. And I looked down the lane to where the target was supposed to be, and I couldn't see the target. I just saw blackness. So I said, okay, it's here. And I aimed for the target there and shot the arrow. Dead bull. There were people spotting from me who told me, dead, dead center bull. I did it again, dead center bull. Four arrows in the dead center bull, and I couldn't see the target. 
Now that's because I trusted my instinct that this is where it was, and that's that's you know that, that's where I must aim. And in opposition to that, I was so pumped up from that shot that the next target I could see. So uh, look at me, how good I am, type of thing. But I shoot an arrow, bang, three. I shoot the next arrow, five. I shoot the next arrow, six or whatever. Four arrows way outside the ball. And it was a much easier target. But now I wasn't trusting, I was trying. So this trust thing is a massive, massive thing. And I think as we go along through life, we've had many opportunities to trust decisions. For instance, an, another interesting incident was when I was traveling through Africa overland and we were in the Sahara Desert and we were sat around the campfire and I decided it's time for a toilet break. So I got up and I got my spade and it was nighttime. So I just walked off. I didn't take a torch with me or anything. I just walked off into the desert and kept walking and kept walking. And the silence was so profound that my ears were sort of almost bursting with the noise of the blood rushing through, which is so beautiful. And I just kept walking. I must have gone almost two miles or something like that. And I didn't have any doubt about getting back because I thought, okay, I've got footprints. I'll follow my footprints back. As it turns out, <laughs> when it was time for me to go home, I looked at the ground, no footprints. Because there's a desert wind that comes through at nighttime just above the floor. And it just, if you know, if you're sleeping on the floor, it will sandblast you. You need a sleep bag to protect you. But it, it also, it just wiped out all the footprints. And then I had this momentary spell of panic. Where do I go? Which way do I go type of thing? And then I said, okay, it's that way. And I started walking and just kept walking and kept walking towards where I believed the camp was. And after, you know, I don't know how long it took me because I wasn't bothered about time. I, you know, after the, the distance I'd, I'd come out, I traveled to go back. There was the camp about 50 or 150 yards away on my left hand side. So I wasn't dead on, but I found it. And so many people in those situations would have ended up walking around or going here, going there, going anywhere, or going a few paces, saying, no, it's not this way, it's not that way. But when you trust yourself, you believe that that is happening, that you know the right thing is happening. It's amazing how empowering it is. And you never, you never even doubt. It doesn't even come into your head. It's that way. Now, there will be little niggling voices saying, uh, okay, maybe, maybe you've got lost or or maybe this has happened, or maybe, but you just ignore them. You just go with that first belief, that first decision, and you keep doing whatever it is. And obviously that, that is a, a situation where most people wouldn't experience because not everybody likes to camp in the middle of the Sahara Desert. <laughs> maybe I'm a bit strange like that, but you know, we, we, you will, if you look back through your life, you'll find many areas where something has happened and you, you've had a decision. Do I trust it or do I, become fearful or do I doubt it or whatever. You know, another in, you know, place where this is this this whole thing could have gone haywire is when I first came to China. I was given a ticket in South Africa to Guangzhou. So I was flying from South Africa to Guangzhou and I was going to a different city in South Africa, sorry, in uh, China, but I didn't have a ticket. And I said, well, where's the ticket to the, the final city? He said, oh no, there'll be somebody waiting for you at the airport. Now, I could have said, okay, well, I don't believe that's going to happen. I'm in a strange country. I can't speak the language. I'm totally on my own. I don't know. But I said, okay. And, you know, I got on the plane and we flew via Singapore and came to, to Guangzhou. And I discovered in that time period, or, you know, after getting the ticket, that I had an hour to get off the plane, the international plane, and get through immigration, customs, and get to the domestic uh, departures area and get on the plane only one hour but i it didn't didn't bother me i just believed it was going to happen and i did try to rush a little bit through baggage claim and stuff like that you can't rush through customs you can't rush through uh immigration but i you know i did as much as i could to speed the process up and i came outside into the arrivals hall and there's a guy there with my name on a piece of paper so I said, okay, that's me. And he just says, okay, come, 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 come. And he's off like a scalded cat. 
he's running off, off somewhere, so I have to chase him. And at that time, this is 20 years or so ago, the, the international airport and the or depart, arrivals departures and the domestic part of the airport were separated by what looked like a supermarket, a food market. And I'm running after this guy, weaving through what looked like aisles of food and stuff like this, and then all of a sudden he arrives at what looked like a supermarket checkout to me. And he gave the ticket to the person there, the girl there, and said, bye-bye, and he's gone. <laughs> so, you know, again, it's a lesson in trust. And, and because that level of trust is there, it's fun, it's exciting. It's no, you know, there's no room for the fear. There's no room for the doubt. There's no room for anything. And if we look at life, you know, our, our journey through life, there are many, many, many incidents we have that give us this opportunity to trust or give us this opportunity to go, you know, go with the downside. And, you know, I'm a coach, so I, I, I talk to a lot of people and I work with a lot of people and I trust what I'm receiving, not only verbally from them, but energetically from them so that I can understand how to help them the best. And everything, every time I trust is always the correct thing. So it's a very, very powerful tool. And, you know, there's just hundreds and hundreds of, of little stories throughout everyone's life where they, they're given these, these choices. But as I said earlier, quite a few people just tend to, they go with a doubt because they want some proof, they want something concrete. But we don't get that. We don't have that opportunity. So my advice is believe in yourself trust yourself and don't expect things to work out exactly the way you imagine be open to how it's going to work out because that's part of the the journey the excitement the fun because it is fun when you when you, you trust yourself and believe in yourself and i'll give you another story when i was uh, in uh, on a game uh, a game um product, how can I say, a walking safari in Southern Africa in the Timbavati uh, Game Reserve. I was right next to the, the guide and we were walking along with about seven or other people behind us. And he said he knows where there's a big old buffalo bull and he'll take us there. And he did. And we, we got close and I said to him, well, I can smell the smell of, of cows and uh, I can smell something. He says, yeah, we're getting close. We just have to be a little bit careful. But I was right close to him and the other people were behind me. So they, they were not really in communication range from, from us. So they were following, you know, uh, one after the other, other. And then all of a sudden there's a cracking and everything else to the branches and this bull made a mock charge. And the funny thing was... <laughs> It stopped and looked at us and, and gave us this BDI and then disappeared again into the bush. And I knew it was still there. And the ranger said, no, it's okay, it's gone. But I said, I know it's there, I can see it, I, I, I know it's there. And I don't know what I was seeing, but it was a sort of shadow, some, some change, but I knew it was there. And he said, no, it's okay, and he starts walking off straight towards it. Well, this guy was serious this time, you know. He really wasn't having any of this nonsense. And he came exploding through the bush, exploded. You know, the branches were breaking, everything, and he's there. And I had an option, obviously, to be scared and run away or to whatever. But the ranger, he was so um, worried that he dropped to his, his uh, knees to try and shoot the buffalo because... He's got to shoot it up through the through here. You can't shoot it in the head. And he did that. You know, he dropped to his knees. But at the same time, I did the same thing. And we just both started shouting at him. And when I say shouting, you cannot believe the amount of noise we produced. The other people behind us, they heard this commotion, but they had no idea what's going on. And one of the people just shot off and rocketed through the whole lot and then felled them all as they were running away. And because we'd sort of dropped down so quickly and we disappeared, the bull was confused because, you know, all of a sudden there's two targets that disappeared. He didn't see the other people. And this wall of noise was hitting him. So he thought, no, there's some kind of voodoo going on here. I'm not having any of this. 
And he stopped and, and turned around and you, you cannot believe the agility in an animal of a one and a half or two tons, you know, the size of that thing. But he did, he, he turned around almost on a dime and shot back through the trees and going off and everything else. Now, I didn't have time to think, so that was an instinctive reaction. But again, it wasn't a, a reaction of doubt. It wasn't a reaction of fear. It was an action of trust. We do this, we shout at it, it's gonna be okay. And not once did I feel scared in that whole episode. It was actually exciting, you know? It was much, you know, so much fun. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's really interesting how we can make our life either fun, fearful, exciting, or, or whatever, just by trusting whatever happens to us, whatever we're presented with and the decision we make immediately when we see that. And I'd like to end this story with another story, a beautiful story of trust is when my wife gave birth to my first child, the, um, the midwife and the doctors and that she was in the theater and I was with her, they, they told us that the umbilical cord is around the neck and they were getting ready to, to prepare for a season. We said, we're not having it. We don't want a season. We want to have a natural childbirth. And um, they said, okay, well, the cutoff time is 9 p.m. It was about 7.30 or something like that. The cutoff time is 9 p.m. If the baby doesn't come out before then, and it was the first child, so they take a bit longer sometimes, um, then we, we have to go to the, to the theater. So we said, okay, and, and I was stood there. And I started using hypnosis because I, I've done a lot of hypnosis training with my wife. So I was basically stood there talking to her and giving her beautiful hypnotic suggestions and everything else. But at the same time, for some reason, I lifted, I left my body and I was, I was actually in the air looking down on the whole thing. And I could see the nurses here. One was filling in the forms on the computer. The other, two, you know, we're talking and there's another on the phone getting the operating thing all set up. And, and, you know, and I was talking. I was just stood there holding my wife's hand, talking to her, and she was going through the motions. You know that, that 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 are apparently you know with, with childbirth there's a there's a big contraction there's pain the breathing goes crazy, and I said uh, breathe but at the same time as her breathing goes crazy the heartbeat of the baby rockets you know so when I told her to breathe and and just gave her a couple more hypnotic suggestions that the, the heartbeat of the baby came down to normal she you know um, relaxed and everything else and I said you know I just gave her the the, the suggestions to help and then all of a sudden. There's this little head starting to appear. And from then, it was just a simple thing. You know, the baby almost, you know, walked out on, 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 on her legs. But, you know, obviously, there's, there's, there's still more pushing and shoving and everything else. But it, it was such a beautiful experience that I trusted. I knew that we were going to have this beautiful birth without any doubt. We weren't going to go to the piazza. We weren't going to have any problems there. And afterwards, you know, and, you know, nobody knew what I was saying to my wife because I'm speaking English. I'm in the south of China, in Guilin, where they speak a local dialect, which is, you know, something I don't understand and they don't understand English. But they told my wife afterwards that they'd never, ever seen such a calm father in the birth before. And it was only because I trusted. I was, uh, you know, I believed that we could do it. Not only me, obviously, but my wife could do it. And I was just helping and helping her direct her energy that she was she was getting every time she was breathing in. And obviously, I was channeling some sort of energy from wherever and, and, and directing it towards her as well. Because you know, why why else would I have this out of body experience? But it was just so beautiful. But again, it came because there was no doubt. Never any doubt, not in my mind, not in her mind. There was no doubt that we were going to have this, this natural birth without painkillers, without an epidural, without you know any intervention whatsoever. And because we trusted, it happened. So, you know, there's a few stories from my personal life that I'd like to encourage you to go back and look at times where you were faced with a challenge and you just trusted the decision and you and you got through and you, you solved the challenge. And that's a beautiful thing to do. But also have a look at the times when you doubted because that just, you know, and, and look at that. You'll, you'll reinforce that the understanding that the first guess is the closest. And when you understand that, and that's, that's something in your mind, 
then you can start acting on that first instinct and start learning and discovering how to trust what messages you're getting, what the understanding you're getting. And from there, you become empowered and you can have such a wonderful, beautiful life. But it does take practice. And never think it's going to turn out 100% the way you think it will, but accept the way it does because that's the best way it could have happened. So those are, those are my one stories, <laughs> but it's the same message, trust, 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 all the way through. And, uh, I, you know, I, I hope you got a lot out of it, but not only that, but you can take away the understanding that you can trust yourself because you have that ability. I mean, have you ever thought about walking? Have you ever thought that, no, I don't know how to walk. I don't trust myself to walk or talk. You know how to talk. You know how to walk. You do it most days. You trust yourself there. So why not learn to trust in other areas? Stuart, thank you so much for sharing your one story with us today. There were so many really, really powerful stories within that uh, that compilation of stories that you shared with us today. I think a couple things really stood out for me. First, the releasing of expectations on how things will work out. Aren't so many of mm -hmm. us really a work in progress yeah. where that is concerned? But also... Yeah, because I think what happens in that respect is we then tell ourselves it's not working because it's not working the way we thought it would or, right. or thought it should. Right. And that's a big thing to take on board. Right. I think also many of us talk about, we say that we have trust issues when it comes to other people. We'll say we're, we're still working to trust other people, but so many of us are still working on learning that piece of just trusting ourselves and trusting our own decisions. So um, mm -hmm. I have to ask you, when you've trusted your decisions, you're all in, you feel it, you believe it. And the outcome here we go with the expectations again. The outcome mm -hmm. isn't what you expected. How do you get yourself back into that space of allowing again to get back on the horse to trust again when when the time comes? I think it's a question of, of looking for the, the beauty in the outcome that you've actually achieved. Yeah. And thinking about, okay, well, you know, maybe this is actually much better than the outcome. I, I I thought I was going to get mm. because that is just a a dream, if you like. Yeah. And um, you know, the other the other thing is, do we need to understand or have that picture of the outcome in the first place? When I first came to China, I didn't have a picture. I didn't have an outcome. And in in mind, I just knew that somebody would be there waiting with a ticket. I didn't know how it was going to come and, and occur. So sometimes that, that dream can contaminate our trust. And going back to what you said about people having, sometimes having trust issues with, with other people, mm. well, there are some people you shouldn't trust. Mm. <laughs> We've got to learn to discern Big these point. things and believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I we, we do. We, I feel like we put a lot of weight on that sometimes where we where we say, like, I'm, I'm really trying to trust other people. But I feel like also at, in that in that piece of trusting others, that's also trusting ourselves that we've made a good decision to have that mm -hmm. person in our circle. Right. Yeah. And I think also it can come down to a lack of confidence in ourselves mm. and our ability and might think we may think that that person won't see any good in us. Yeah. So then we have that issue that, that you know, it, it gets very complicated. But I think, again, once we start believing in ourselves and we can understand that we are beautiful mm -hmm. and get out of this perfection seeking mode and, and, and just say, okay, I am perfect at the moment the way I am. I can always grow. Because I've grown, you know, from a child, I can always grow and get better. Yeah. But as I am now, this is the opportunity to have that connection and then see what beauty comes of it. Mm. And uh, 
if you focus on the other person rather than focusing on yourself, that takes the pressure off you. Mm. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Well, I'm so thankful that you were able to come and share your stories with us today. And obviously I put your information down in the comments and it's scrolling down mm -hmm. at the bottom for everyone. But if you would verbally tell everybody where they can find you and what they can expect to find there as well. Yeah. I mean, the, the website address there, um, Stuart Elliott, Stuart com. there's a page on there called my hyphen links. And that's got all my links to LinkedIn and uh, my calendar if they'd like to have a, a further chat with me and my email, et cetera, et cetera, so they can go there. But basically, my job is to, you know, as Jessica mentioned earlier, is, is to help you break through that BS barrier that uh, traps you. And once we take it away, then obviously we need to put in a beneficial belief system to empower you so that you can start stepping into your two, true greatness. And many people don't realize that, but that's what I love doing because as soon as you connect to that feeling from your heart and that smile, well, that, that, that just is the biggest reward ever. Mm -hmm. And that's infectious for everybody else around you too. So that's basically the best thing to do. I love it. I love it. Thank you again for being here with us today, Stuart. I appreciate your time and absolutely appreciate the story time together. I know a lot of people are going to be able to take those vivid stories from the brush and childbirth and all of those fun things that <laughs> people to go, hey, like maybe I can trust myself a little bit more in the decisions I make today and that everything is going to turn out, even if it's not maybe what I expected it to be. So thank you so much. And, and that little bit of extra trust yeah. grows. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It's not something like there's a switch and you just get 1 million watts of trust. Mm. You trust that little bit, that little bit, and you just grow from there yeah. and leave the expectations behind, as you said so wisely, and uh, be open to the beauty of whatever happened. Mm. Be open to the beauty of whatever happens. That's such a gift that you can give yourself. And I know you've given us here today, Stuart. Thank you again for being here today. I want to thank all of it's you. It's my for pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all for watching or listening wherever you are in the world today. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, and I'll see you next time for another episode with one guest, one story, one question, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.